Shia Muslim man sentenced to death for blasphemy. On February 23rd, Wasim Abbas, a man from the minority Shia Muslim community in Pakistan, was given the death penalty in a fine of almost well, what equates to $3,000 USD for blasphemy charges. He was charged with, quote unquote, insulting the Prophet Muhammad. A failure to pay the penalty will result in an additional two years imprisonment. Abbas was arrested in June 2020 in Faisalabad after allegedly assaulting the Prophet and his companions. A 2016 report by Amnesty International shows the blasphemy laws in Pakistan are wor broad broadly worded and therefore abused often. Um, and then just to recap, recently a Hindu teacher was sentenced to life imprisonment and a mentally disabled individual was murdered by a mob for blasphemy. Both of, uh, both of them were accused for committing blasphemy. One of the most famous cases of alleged blasphemy is the one of Asya Bibi. In 2018, she became the most high-profile blasphemy case after she was acquitted and had to flee the country to assure her safety. We're getting close to a situation where there's not going to be a month in Pakistan where we don't have a blasphemy case. Oh, we're, we're already there, huh? at that point. There are, oh, okay. I mean, in terms of accusations, we're already at that point. Oh, yeah. Definitely. Okay, but that, In terms of charges or sentencing, it's a little different. We're, we're going to get, I'm, that's what I'm saying. I'm saying when it comes to charging, sentencing, or de or mob killings, we're going to be getting close to a point where it's just like every month, every month, there's going to be at least one. Yeah, I know accusations are happening like every, you know, a lot. Um, what did this guy say, by the way? Like, they're by the way, Shia is like, they're coming for Shias are going to be a major target if things keep going the way they are in Pakistan because it used to be like I don't know infidels and secularists and atheists and then when they went I mean it was always the Ahmadis Christians right or Hindus the Christian yeah the Hindus but mainly always the Ahmadis so first they went for the Ahmadis and you said nothing then they went for the atheists and secularists then they went for like the Christians and Hindus. And now they're going for their fellow Muslims, which are not Sunni. It's like, like they're going, I mean, after Shia Muslims. I mean, technically, and you know, technically, technically, according to their standards, just believing in Shia Islam is blasphemy. So if you want to yeah. keep abiding by the standard, every single Shia Muslim will become a blasphemer by default. And if how not many, a like, kafir. Yeah. And yeah, so yeah, so th this is really dangerous. Like, there's a lot of sh there are many Shia Muslims in Pakistan, and they're all becoming targets at some point. Oh, also, yeah, no, never mind. I, I thought well, I you just asked went... what he was arrested for. I wasn't able to find any specific information about what in particular he said or what he was alleged. You know, what this alleged insult was because his charge was insulting the Prophet Muhammad, but in some reporting, it said that he was arrested for insulting the Prophet Muhammad and his companions. So obviously, this is where the Shia angle comes in. Because right. for those who are not aware, um, majority of Muslims around the world are Sunnis. They very much venerate, um, well, you know, they both sects say that they venerate all of these people, but some venerate them more than others, right? So Sunnis are, are you know, they venerate the Sahaba more. That would be his uh, prophet muhammad's disciples or companions and then um shias more venerate his actual family you know his progeny um ahl bayt yeah ahl bayt so there are certain traditions in which shias actually curse the sahaba for their responsibility in the deaths of um uh, in the in the deaths of muhammad's family so this is often where a lot of accusations or a lot that a lot of Sunnis use to show the, the depravity of Shias is by showing how they openly curse the Sahaba. Um, and this is used to sh stir up a lot of anti-Shia sentiment. Um, so I, it's not surprising that reportedly this had to do with some sort of insult to the companions because there's just inherently a very different orientation towards how you view these figures. Um, but I have no idea, you know, some some Sunnis really put forth this idea that all Shias like just curse and hate the Sahaba. Like that's not true. There's some right. that are very extreme. 
um, that, uh, you know, do it in a very extreme way. And I actually think that it puts Shias like around the world in danger because it's used as prop against Shias en masse. Um, yeah. But, you know, who knows what this guy said? I would yeah, I, it probably wasn't even that extreme. We don't know. Or maybe he said nothing. And this is just used to settle a score because blasphemy laws in Pakistan are used to settle scores all the time. Right. Um, I, I'm a, I have a problem with the framing of the comment that you highlighted. Do you want to address that? Because I have an issue. There. On YouTube is saying she is used to target Ahmadis and now it's them. Yeah, this is dangerous. We shouldn't frame it like that because that's how um, the Sunnis because well, actually that's because it well, no because that if you think if you frame it like that people will see it as deserving uh this is collective this is a collective way of framing it okay because some shias did something and now we're so we shouldn't i mean I, atheists on youtube i know what the way you're saying it you don't i i know that you're not somebody that thinks that this is what they're doing to shias you're not suggesting that it's justifiable uh, or that they deserve it, but may, if it's framed like that, a lot of people will have the under feeling like, well, you get what you deserve. Like, how do you how do you like a taste of your own medicine? Okay, um, and this is a very dangerous way of thinking because you, you're holding we would be holding they would be holding a whole group of people responsible for the actions of a few, right? Like the Shias who targeted Ahmadis. Um, Obviously, they represent a fringe group of the entire Shia population in Pakistan. Like, what do you want to do? Like, like the attacks, uh, you, you, the attacks on the Shia community is not going to be exactly directed at the same people um, who were targeting Ahmadis. And even if it were uh, directly targeting them, it would still not be justified. Like, the, if there's any punishments, it should be in the court and under a fair justice system or anything like that, right? So let's not just like collectively talk about an entire group of people like that. Yeah, I know atheists on YouTube are saying like, I did not mean it like that. I didn't say you meant it like that, but that's how people will think about it if we frame well, it. Well, Armin, like to be honest, I feel like you've expressed a similar sentiment where you're not trying to collectively pass blame or or, or justify any collective action towards Shias. You're, I mean, what did you just say? First, they came for the Ahmadis, then they came for blah, 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 and now they're coming for the Shias. It, it, you're expressing the sentiment of just the pattern of history. No, I was talking about the vic who, which group of people are the victim. I don't talk about the attackers in a collective way ever. That's dangerous. I didn't say the Sunnis came for the Shias, right? Mm -hmm. I would, if I did, and if I did, I should be whole, I sh you should be um, calling it out. Like, hey, I mean, don't say the Sunnis did that. Not all Sunnis did that. Like, I'm more comfort. Like, because when they come for a community, it is fair to refer to it collectively because they are coming for that community collectively. Yeah. Okay, but the people who are doing the the people who are being victimized, they're collectively being victimized. But the people who are doing the targeting, they're not collectively responsible. So if I'm referring to the victims, I'm happy with being referring to an entire group. Okay, even if you as an individual haven't been targeted, you are a target because you belong to this community. So it is fair to refer to the entire, and it's not dangerous to refer to an entire community as a victim because you're not holding them responsible. They're a victim. It's the only dangerous to refer to the attackers collectively as a group because then you will be doing guilt by association. Does that make sense? Yeah. No, I just know for a fact when we've talked about the issue, this issue before, you have talked about how it was, you know, Shia is united with Sunnis against Ahmadis. Like, okay, so hold me responsible. So I say some Shias with some Sunnis against Ahmadis. So if I do that, don't let me get away with talking like that. Okay. So, well, that's why sure I bring that... it up now. Okay, good. But yeah, but make sure you call, call me out when I do it. Um, at the time, so I learned my lesson. Okay. To be fair, um, maybe when we were talking about this, you did make those nuances, right? I can't remember yeah. off the top of my head. I just know that we talked about it. So. Yeah, yeah. I try to not collectively mm, hold an entire group of people responsible. Mm -hmm. If I ever fail, please point it out. Um, so atheists on YouTube saying, "I did not mean it like that. Sorry. I mean they did it to others. Now others are doing it to them. What goes around comes." Wait, you made it. Worse. No, you just made it worse. <laughs> 
what are you talking about okay you've yeah i wasn't getting that vibe from you at the beginning but now i am what comes what goes around comes around this is horrible way of like what are you talking about atheist like you didn't mean it like that well now it sounds like you did mean it like that what goes around comes around this is like very dangerous language you're you're saying that the shias are collectively responsible for what they did before for what, what some shias did before to to ahmadis what goes around comes around this is horrible do you believe in karma now this is this is this is dangerous what do you mean i didn't mean it like that what is this then no we don't agree with this what goes around. they don't know the shia community does no what goes around does not come around especially when they didn't do it it's bull crap we do not hold the shia community in pakistan collectively responsible for what some shias did to some ahmadis and what goes and this is not something that has to uh, should coming around no no this is not this is not something lo, a, a law within the fabric of the universe that what go, comes around go, first of all it did it, they didn't do this and even if they did this this is not a rule that has to happen i don't understand yeah this is like some karma bull crap um Horace sultan is here hi Horace. Saying, I just saw this on your website. I'll talk about it too. Your website is a great tool to stay up to date with religion related news. Oh my God. Well, thank you. That's know? such a big compliment. That's um, such a. Okay. Back at you, um, 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 Harris, because we also look at your channel to make sure that we're also up to date on everything sure. uh, India and Pakistan related. Sometimes uh, when you cover something, we send, I send that video to Susanna. I was like, hey, we should talk about this. So same thing yeah no that's true horace if you are able to find more information about this case please let me know because there was very little um available information in english so please let me know if there's more to this story or if there was anything inaccurate about our reporting because we were dealing with limited information um uh horace is also saying in reference to the last comment we were discussing these people can never get out of their collective mentality. There, there is no evidence of what goes around comes around. True. Yes. Yeah. It's just a myth people like to believe in to to get the to get the um, the satisfaction of there being a uh, a default justice hard coded within the fabric of the universe. Okay, justice is not a gift from nature, from God, or the universe. Justice is something that you need to fight for. And if you don't fight for it, you're not going to get justice. Okay. It's not within the rules of nature or there's, there's nothing that guarantees justice. Okay. What comes around comes. That's, that's bull crap. Okay. Um, religious people, uh, and people who believe in superstition have always tried to, um, convince people of that just to get the sense of satisfaction that, uh, the people who they hate will one day pay the price for it but that there's no guarantee for that ever. Okay. There are many people who have been, um, living very immoral lives and have wronged many people and have very, have lived very happy lives and died very happy people. And there are also many, very, very good people that have done nothing wrong to anybody and have lived very, very miserable lives and have died miserably. Okay. There is no justice to your universe. The only justice you're going to get is the justice that you fight for. Um, okay. Yeah, also it's like the law of attraction or mythical. So. Hey guys, if you're a fan of blasphemy and sexy Callie, you know, like me, then you need to be sure to subscribe to our newsletter. Link in the description below. Because if you subscribe, we will send you a free copy of our Blasphemous Art ebook. And let me tell you, it is the tastiest blasphemy that you can find anywhere available today and we are so generous with our blasphemy that we continue to send you more blasphemy every week so make sure to subscribe link in the description below